Hey everyone, it's Paul Messenger. Wanted to show off the Access Perimeter Defender functionality that we've added into the public demo site, also known as the Cloud Demo System. Probably many of you have already been demoing this for some time, but we did change the zone, the area. So I wanted to provide this update and just uh, explain some of the things I do to demo um, um, the, uh, uh, the integration. So we've got this access analytics view that you see when you log into the uh, public demo site. The upper left is the kind of explanatory view. And what this is when you double click it to bring it, uh, make it larger, is a screenshot from the Access Perimeter Defender bridge. You can download the, this bridge, this application that they have off the Access website, and it allows you to configure your loitering and perimeter defender zones on multiple cameras and uh, and set up uh, what's going to appear on the smart client and uh, trigger what's going to happen for the alarms. So in this case, you can see on the marketing camera, we've drawn a zone here and you can see we're looking for people in that zone and a minimum presence of 20 seconds before we're going to alarm. So that's why we've loaded that screenshot just so when you're demoing, people understand what they're looking at. Then on the right hand side here, you've got a live view of the uh, camera and you can see that we ingest that metadata of the zone and then also the green ball in the upper right showing when it's in a, a non-alarm state, it'll go to red when it's in an alarm state. Then the bottom left is a, an alarm uh, um, a list, a view that's been created with filters applied so that it's just pulling uh, by default the um, loitering uh, perimeter defender alarms that have triggered in this particular zone. And then the right hand side, bottom right, is the alarm preview. So if I click this list, when you're doing demos, it should take you right to when we've had um, events. So one thing you notice when I click these ones in the bottom, uh, we don't have uh, uh, the recordings anymore because they're more than seven days. So I'm actually going to close those out. But if you've ever, if you're ever, ever on a demo and you click an alarm and it just always pulls up the the, the same video clip, it's pulling the last uh, piece of video that we had recorded at that time. So make sure when you're doing demos, you're pulling alarms within the last seven days. None of these March 31st ones, we don't have the video any longer. But if I go to April 2nd, the top in the list, that's where you can see the cleaning crew who uh, is triggering this quite a bit. Since we don't have people in the office due to the current situation, the alarms are few and far between, but we've got commitment for people to go occasionally and trigger these so you guys have the ability to, uh, to demo them. But what you can do when you click that alarm, it's going to pull up the time that the alarm is tripped. You can uh, zoom in the timeline there and you can um, uh, show what's happening. So I'm gonna double click to bring that full screen. I'm gonna make the timeline uh, five minutes. Excuse me. Hit the wrong button. And then you can show exactly what happened, right? So, uh, you know, this person enters the scene at 8.24 and 16 seconds. And that's when Perimeter Defender puts the red box around the individual. And then I can play the video back, and I can see 16, 17, 18. Once the timeline hits uh, 36 seconds, we should see the green go from red, letting us know that the alarm has triggered based on the settings that we've set. It's kind of cool. You get this little uh, uh, trail, uh, this metadata trail showing uh, where the person went, um, uh, where they were moving within the particular area. And if you tell the story about using this to protect a real exterior camera with a larger um, uh, perimeter, that would be helpful. So you can easily see once you get the object tag uh, where they came from and, and where they were going. But there you can see right about uh, you know 36, 37 seconds is when the alarm gets triggered. And that's what's reflected uh, on the timeline in the alarm preview. Um, if I click off that and click back, it takes me right to 34, 35, 36 when the alarm uh, triggers. So that's what this view is, explanatory view showing what we've set up, where the zone is. And then this is when you can talk about the, the open platform and the fact that because Access wrote this Perimeter Defender plugin, we're able to ingest this metadata, show the zone, show the object classification tag, and the trail of uh, direction of travel, et cetera, et cetera. So you can also show how this is uh, uh, firing into the standard map. So if you click the standard map view, you can drill down to the um, to the actual map, and you can see uh, that there's a marketing uh, a camera that has an alarm, right? So that's what uh, that's one place wh when they trigger, they'll come in there. So that helps you talk about how we tie into camera side in, uh, analytic integrations and how you can use the map feature to event an alarm off them. Of course, we all know and love the alarm manager. So you can come there, 
to uh, um, show these off. So if you don't see a loitering alarm in recent history, luckily here I do, this one from April 2nd, uh, you can see how that pops into the list. And then if I double click, I get the alarm handling dialog, and that's where you've got live video, it takes you right to the uh, uh, alarm state, the video in the preview, and then that's where you can show where you can assign this to an operator, you know, give it a status update, a priority level, and then instructions, right, telling the operator what to do should this loitering alarm occur. And another key thing to talk about here is normally you have to set up the alarm uh, definitions and text. The way Access wrote the perimeter defender integration, the alarms automatically come into the, to the smart client. You don't have to go through the headache of manually configuring all the alarms and which devices you're receiving them from. The perimeter defender plugin takes care of that for you. And then in search, right? Search is king. So it's really cool that you can search these. I'm gonna clear my list, but I can pull up, you know, the last seven days of, um, of video, for example. I can pull up the marketing camera. So there's a couple, oh, there's six marketing cameras, but you you wanna go to the, uh, just, the uh, just the one that says marketing access. So 476 results over the last seven days. That's super annoying. I just want to search for alarms off this on this camera. And once I search for alarms, you can see I get to just the one that I have video. So it's a little smarter than the alarm list. Uh, search knows that I only had recordings uh, for this one that occurred on April 2nd. So that's how you can highlight Perimeter Defender, talk about the plugin, what Access was able to do to allow us to ingest that metadata, how you can search it, uh, how you can get proactive with your video surveillance cameras, and how oftentimes these analytics are sitting ready to go at the edge with the camera, but you're not able to leverage them because you don't have a VMS that easily supports doing something with those alarms and that intelligence that sits within the camera. So again, send your feedback. Let me know how we can make this better. And uh, the more use cases and stories we can tell around it, uh, the better. Thank you, everyone. Take care.